All right, property investors, the latest news is in and house price inflation has accelerated to more than 6% in the month of February. Uh, the property price index came in at 6.1%. Now that is an annualized figure, but previously it was 54 So the prices are actually going up. And this is now the sixth month in a row that house prices have increased. So if we go into the breakdown, Dublin prices rose by 5.6% in this period. Outside of Dublin, it rose 6.5%. And so the average is 6.1% across the entire country. Now, this had slowed because of the increasing interest rates. The ECB, as most of us know, the European Central Bank, they had increased rates by the last 10 times consecutively increasing rates. And so it's become very expensive for a lot of people out there in terms of mortgages and things like that. But the news from the ECB now is that rates are gonna start falling in June. And so of course, people are back in the market in anticipation of that. And the big question is what's gonna happen going forward. Now, the government introduced various schemes to help buyers and one of the schemes that they introduced was, you know, helping first time buyers. Sure enough, what's happened, first time buyers, that segment of the market has grown more than other segments. And this all boils down to politicians love to make promises. Anything that's unpopular, like house prices, they love to make uh, lots and lots of promises. It helps them to get elected. It helps them to stay elected. And I do not doubt their sincerity. Like this is a big problem everyone wants to fix. So they genuinely may wish to fix it. But the problem is words alone will not fix it. The problem is supply. There is a massive, massive supply demand imbalance out there. The tension is off the scales and this is not an easy fix. Um, and words get words get turned into policy. Policy tends to have a negative impact on the market. And so they might wish for something to happen but actually something else happens that was unintended if you look at what Sinn Féin are promising at the moment Sinn Féin are saying that they're going to bring in a, a no-fault eviction ban and this will mean that tenants are you know safe in their homes that they're renting and that's going to be popular no doubt with their base but again it's just words and words turn into policy policy turns into action and the market will adapt accordingly. So consider how the market is going to adapt to a no fault eviction ban being brought in. You saw what happened previously. Um, the eviction ban that, that was brought in, it caused the market to skew in one direction. Landlords all piling out of the market as soon as they had an opportunity. Um, what's going to happen? First of all, if they bring this in, or if there's even a hint that it's going to be brought in, you're going to start to see landlords exiting the market. Uh, is that something that we want? Do we want landlords to get out of the market? If you are somebody who is renting a property and you cannot afford a deposit, what are your options? The median house price in the country is now 330,000. In Dublin, that figure is 445. That's the average price of a house in Dublin. How many of you out there can afford 10% deposit. If you're buying, that's 33 grand. If you're in Dublin, that's 45 grand that you have to raise to go and buy a house. If you're not sitting on that kind of money, where are you going to buy your house? How are you going to get the money together? Um, if you can't buy it, what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to rent it. And so this is why I'm concerned about things like a no fault eviction ban. It's going to introduce this tension in the market where landlords are going to get out. Uh, any landlord that, you know, most landlords are small landlords with a mortgage. It's not going to be worth the risk. If you've got a mortgage and you're thinking that somebody could just decide to stop paying and you won't be able to get rid of them, what is it going to do to your banking situation? You're going to be under a huge amount of pressure. Often the profit and the cash flow in a house investment, like a buy to let, it's very, very marginal. People are not making huge money and the taxman takes... 50% of whatever it is that you have left. So a lot of landlords will just think this is just not worth the risk, not worth the pressure. And so they'll just pull out. Those who remain in the market, what they're going to do is introduce 
super stringent checks. And that's going to mean that your rental history is absolutely critical. Any blip in your past is going to be a big red flag and no chance you're going to be able to rent to a landlord who's been careful. And what's this going to do? It's going to drive up rental prices even more, in my opinion. Are landlords the enemy, ultimately? Most landlords are just small people, like tradespeople, electricians, plumbers and stuff, and they buy a property because they want to have some sort of a pension plan. They don't believe in putting money into, you know, these big funds, they prefer to have something that they can touch. And so a house is a way of doing that. And do we want to take that away from people? Do we want to take away the pension options for them? Remember that things like the HAP, the housing assistance payment, for that to work, it requires a landlord. Without landlords, there is going to be an increase in homelessness. And so property investors, those of you that are listening here today, the uncertainty that is ahead, it increases risks and it makes you wonder about should you enter the market. In my view, the traditional buy to let uh, investment model, just it's not a route any longer. You're not going to get wealthy doing that. The key to surviving in property is resourcefulness. And you have to understand how to unlock value in an opportunity in property. Um, the best you, you know, the best place to do that is being around others. If you're around others, you may be able to, you know, get a, a hang, uh, some sort of a idea of the financial side, how it works. You'll learn from others how to spot an opportunity. You might learn how to evaluate and mitigate risk, how to, for example, raise money, you know, who's going where, which mortgage providers are doing it how to negotiate. If you're going to put in an offer, how do you negotiate? A lot of this you learn by being in a community and joining a community. Where would you go? Well, I have a community. I have a completely free to join community in school. You'll see a link in the uh, profile, in my profile above. Click on that and uh, you'll join, put in an, uh, put in your Three questions. I asked three questions just to try to avoid scammers and stuff. Um, answer those questions and let me know why you want to join. But be happy to have you in the school community.